In the previous video, we used Google Sheets spreadsheet to set up an implementation of Newton's method to find the roots of the function x cubed minus 3x. And we found that if we started off with an x naught of 0 0.2, we converged to the root that we already knew, knew, which was x equals 0. And that's not the one we want. So what we'd like to find out is how can we choose x naught so that the root we converge to is one of the other ones. In particular, we are interested in finding a decimal expression for the square root of 3, which is one of the other two roots of this function. So let's go over to Desmos and see how we can choose our x naught appropriately. First, what I do is uh, write in the formula for the function so I can see what the function looks like. And then here I'm, I have a bunch of lines that plot out different things. So let me just make them all visible at once. And what you see is an initial value of x naught. Let me set it to 0 0.02. Sorry, 0 0.2, which is the value I used in that spreadsheet. And now you can see this is the initial point x naught. And then I go to the point on the graph at x naught, and I find the tangent line, which is this little blue line segment, and I see where does this blue line intersect the x-axis. And in this case, it's extremely close to x equals 0. So it's not surprising that after only one iterate, we're already very close to 0, and after two, we're extremely close to 0. So how do I modify that? Well, if I slide my point along, I can increase it or decrease it. If I go down this way, you can see all through this range, right near the origin, Newton's method will converge to the origin. If I go far enough out here, I actually get close to the root on the right after only one iterate. But it's hard to figure out exactly where that is, so that's maybe not an ideal place to start. And if I miss, I could get launched way off t towards infinity. And this spot right here is a big problem because this will take me to a point off at infinity and I'll end up with no second iterate. So, and over here I'll converge over to the negative root. So let's go all the way up here towards, let's say, the positive root and see what happens. So after one iterate, we're already anywhere in this range here, we're close. So it looks to me like starting at either two or maybe, well, 1 is bad, but somewhere halfway between 1 and 2. 1 1.5 will also work well. So let's add a second iterate so we can see what happens next. Now when I slide this point along, you can see not only the first iterate, but now I take that one and I find the tangent line to the graph at that point and follow it to the x-axis. And you can see that even if I'm not doing a great job on the first iterate, the second iterate comes very close to the root. So this tells me that I should choose a value somewhere around 1.5 or I could also choose one above at, one, at 2. So 1.5, where do we end up? Ah, what's happened here? So something went wrong. Ah. I see. My original formula should have had a b5 in it, not a b3. So we have to redo that. And now if I copy this correct formula down, ah, that's better. So if we're at 0 0.2, here as we thought it should, it does converge to 0. Last time it was just lucky that it did with the wrong formula. But now that we've corrected it, we can see that 0 0.2 is not going to work well, but 1.5 does. And you can see this number here, if I square that, should give me 3. So I've converged to the correct decimal expansion for the square root of 3. And that is how we use a spreadsheet to implement Newton's method and use some kind of graphing calculator technique to identify a suitable starting point.